you know, when it comes to nerds, there are times where all of us, as all of us, as wrestling fans, can represent one of the biggest groups of nerds out there. Doesn't matter who you go up against. Comic book geeks can kiss our asses. Because when we get upset, or we get motivated, or we get raging, you just see the geek juice flow all over the internet. And yes, that absolutely includes those of you that are going to come on this video and c proclaim that you're not a nerd. Uh, ding dong, dumb dick. You came onto YouTube, clicked on a wrestling-related video about fake scripted WWE to see my pasty ass. That makes you a nerd. Sometimes the nerd thing isn't as bad as others. And ultimately, let's be honest, there's not really anything wrong with being a nerd. I mean, look at the freaking Beyonce marks and how nerdy they can be about their fucking queen and how nerdy people could be about TV shows like The Walking Dead that have lived six years past their damn relevancy. And it goes on and on. The Kardashian sluts and all this other stuff. People are nerds about the NFL and NBA and baseball and hockey and soccer and somewhere along the lines, computers, video games. Somebody is a nerd for something. Everybody is a nerd for something. That simple. But I look at wrestling fans, man, and all week long, as Raw and SmackDown were happening, all these fans are talking about, oh my god, Raw is getting destroyed, oh my god, SmackDown's winning the Superstar Shake-Up, they're cleaning house, they got all the talent, they clearly have the A roster now. And it's like, we're making this big of a deal out of a thing that the company doesn't even want to call a draft, which is basically what the hell it is. We're getting this worked up like it really matters. Like this thing is actually real. N n not a match, not a promo, not a storyline. A superstar shakeup. Good God almighty, the geek juice is flowing all over the internet this week. And, and, and here's what it is. It's people saying, oh, you look at what SmackDown got. They got Asuka. They got Andrade Cien Almas and Selena Vega. They got Big Cass. They got Jeff Hardy. They got R-Truth. They got The Bar, Anderson and Gallows, Sanity, The Miz, Samoa Joe. They just cleaned Raw's clock six ways from Sunday. Raw can have Baron Corbin. Raw can even have Bobby Roode and <laughs> fuck Dolph Ziggler. We got Samoa Joe and The Miz and our freaking truth. By God, SmackDown dominated. You take that along with already having AJ Styles and Daniel Bryan and Shinsuke Nakamura, The New Day, The Usos, Charlotte Flair. Oh my God. It's so awesome. It's so great. How could they possibly fit everything into two hours on Tuesday nights? And oh my Christ. Like, when you really look at what SmackDown got. What did they really get? They got somebody in Asuka who is of second rate importance in terms of women in the uh, company. And how do you know that? Because they snapped her streak at WrestleMania to give it to Charlotte Flair so that way they could build up to Charlotte Flair and Ronda Rousey. They already have Charlotte over there. They care way more about her than they do Asuka, and that's a fact. Jack. It's, it's just the truth. Andrade Cien Almas and, the, and Sanity? Okay, great. You liked him in NXT. That is no guarantee of anything once they get to the main roster. I have much more confidence about a Cien Almas, mind you, doing some decent things, especially because the company's going to look at him as their next Hispanic, Latin, Mexican star. He's got a built-in heater on many different levels in Selena Vega, but I get it. But we're talking about this domination, like they got something incredible, like The Bar. Who gives a shit? Anderson and Gallows. Ding Dong Dum Dicks. This is not fucking New Japan. They are the bald jobber team. 
If we were talking about Southpaw Regional Wrestling, Anderson and Gallows, that's a different story. But we're not. They're lame. And now they're not with their buddy Balor. They don't matter. You got our truth. whoop de doo Big Cass. Woo! Test without any of the steroids. You got the Hardy the company currently cares about less. Yes, the Miz and Samoa Joe are big gets, but they are easily the biggest gets. And this whole thing about how they clean Raw's clock and they have by far the superior roster. What the fuck is everybody smoking? Because number one, let's look at what Raw still has. Whether you like these people or not, they've still got Roman Reigns, Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman, when he's there and not kicking out of his potential marriage at a two count, John Cena, Matt Hardy, Bray Wyatt, Kevin Owens has come over now. You've got Lashley, Ronda Rousey, Alexa Bliss, Sasha Banks, Bailey, Nia Jax. What I see is a roster on Raw where maybe the undercard isn't as strong because who gives a fucking shit? What they do have, though, is the vast majority of the people that the company really cares about the most. They've got Roman, they've got Seth, they've got Braun, Cena, they've got Matt Hardy, a newly returning Lashley, Ronda Rousey, Alexa Bliss. Again, they've got the majority of the people that they actually give a shit about on Raw, not SmackDown. Just because you nerd out because you think about X guy or Y guy or Z guy wrestling in New Japan or ROH or Impact several damn years ago has no current bearing on the WWE reality. And the WWE reality is they care so much about a Daniel Bryan that they're using him to try and elevate a big freaking cast. Raw has still most of the people that the company cares about. It's not like Raw is really losing much because most weeks the show is not that good anyways. So in the grand scheme of things, they can plug and replace with other faces, other names, like let's say Bobby Roode, and not miss a damn thing because it doesn't make a damn difference. But when you talk about SmackDown, you got a bunch of fucking new people, jobbers, and mid-carters. And this is what we're celebrating, and this is what we're talking trash about, and this is what we're saying SmackDown dominated and kicked Raw's ass in? What the hell is going on here? Like, are we serious? This seems to be we're forgetting a couple of things. Number one, SmackDown is only two hours. So, if you think this thing is so loaded, that means ultimately that worthy and deserving people aren't going to be on the show. So that will be something to piss you off and bitch about. Number two, you may potentially get to a point where SmackDown is three hours. Is that what you really want? Is that what you really want? Number three, and this is a big one, with the freaking dual branded pay-per-views, half of the crap that happens on SmackDown and half of the crap that happens on Raw is going to have absolutely no bearing on the damn pay-per-view anyways. Absolutely none. Because half of the stuff that goes on in the show won't pertain to it because they won't have enough room on the pay-per-views. Unless it leads to all pay-per-views being four hours and at that case in point in time, we should all commit wrestling suicide. Like half of the crap's not going to matter. Then number four, you are still forgetting a key component here is that Raw always has been and always will be the A-show in Vince McMahon's mind. And as long as Vince McMahon is alive, nothing will change that. That will always get the most attention, that will always get the most focus, that will always get the most thrown at it. Hence why it has not maybe the level of undercard and midcard depth, like that fucking matters in the current WWE. They have the vast majority of the people that the company gives a crap about the most. And that is the absolute truth. And you know it. Like you could sit there and get all giggly tits about, oh my God, SmackDown's got this guy or SmackDown's that, that guy. Daniel Bryan's just coming back and they want to throw him into a feud with Big Cass. The most notable thing Shinsuke Nakamura has done on the main roster 
is become a dude, basically the Japanese wrestling version of Bobby Hill. But instead of kicking, he's now sitting there and low-blowing everybody in the testicles with this goddamn Nakamura nut cruncher. Like, that's the most notable thing he's done. They give a crap more about Jinder Mahal, who, by the way, came to Raw, than the vast majority of the SmackDown roster, and that's an absolute fact. And frankly, as they should. But, but, SmackDown got the better of this? Okay, let's say, let's say you're right in theory. And you're not, but let's just humor it for a second. You are still forgetting the biggest, single, most important factor here is that no matter how much talent you add to a show, it does not matter if the village is run by idiots. All of you guys that sit there and talk about this and that, SmackDown got this, SmackDown got that, they won your superstar shakeup, their talent is so much better. The problem is they didn't change the talent in the creative team of SmackDown, and last time we checked, Road Dogg is still the head writer for said SmackDown show. So all you guys are sitting there talking about hashtag fire road dog, but now all of a sudden pretending like an influx of ten new names is going to make any fucking difference. What the hell are you smoking? Just, what, what the hell are you thinking? Are we that desperate for wrestling stuff to talk about that we have to sit there and talk about who wins or who loses? Goddamn fictitious non draft wrestling draft superstar shakeup crap. Is that where we've gotten to as a wrestling community? Is our nerddom that extreme to that level that that's what gives us our kicks now? And I suppose in today's wrestling world, where the wrestlers are now the fans because they're the ones doing the podcast and crap. And the fans are the wrestlers because they're the ones that are actually getting into the business and helping to ruin the business. What else would I expect? A bunch of nerds debating on the internet over whether SmackDown or Raw won the Superstar Shake-Up. You could put everybody on goddamn SmackDown. It ain't winning shit. And don't just sit there and say, well, the show is an hour less and it automatically wins because Road Dogg and his creative team on SmackDown have proven to you time and time again that less time doesn't necessarily mean for a good time for all of you. You've got dual branded pay-per-views. Most of the people the company gives a crap about are on Raw. Raw is still the A show, still the number one priority. It's on a better night, it's got an extra hour, which doesn't necessarily help the quality of the show, but there are times you look at SmackDown and wish it was NXT length, but now all of a sudden, we're going to sit there and say, well, Road Dog really has no excuse. Him and his team didn't have a fucking excuse before, and they still put together a consistently shitty show over the past 12 plus months. Consistently. Rocking the boat and adding a few mid-carters ain't going to make a ba damn bit of difference. If you think it really is, then you're not only nerds, but you're really, really stoned out of your mind, nerds. And at this point in time, even though I don't smoke, I might want to light up one of those fatties because clearly they are incredible mind-altering drugs that you're smoking. Because you must be crazy. SmackDown didn't win shit. They have always been the B-Show. They are the B-Show. And they will continue to be the B-Show. And I'll emphasize one more time. You are putting your faith in Road Dog and the SmackDown writing team. How do you think that's going to work out?